Then good, good morning to your exciting super morning show here on TV3. Of course, it's New Day we're talking about, certainly. We thank you that last year you made us the best TV morning show yeah. here in Ghana. And certainly, we plan to live up to that in 2018 to serve you the best breakfast, as Bright will say, in the whole of Africa. Yeah. Certainly, I'm not doing this alone. I'm here with George, and Johnny will join us later on in the show. We plan to give you a good morning right from now till about 9 a.m. when we wrap up the show. There'll be a man joining us in studio today to talk about his fight for water, clean water, and he's walked all the way from Denmark and he's in Accra. So certainly you don't want to change the station because you want to hear from that man. Good morning, George. Good morning, Nama. And also on Daily Runs, I just you know, went to the street yesterday. So another, another is uh, one. one year <laughs> in office. And so we just shook the views for the public, what they make of uh, the one year of the four-year tenure of uh, the Nado government. Certainly. Yeah. So I'm sure you hear that when we come to Daily Run. But I'd like to give a very good morning to the couple who were wedded over the weekend, Mr. and Mrs. Boating, and also good morning to Honorable Alfred Oko Van der Poel. I hope you had a lovely weekend. But certainly we have a lot for you exactly. here on TV3 New Day, so you don't want to change the station. But I mean, um, I don't know what you did over the weekend, but certainly this weekend was a bit calm and it looks right. like it was the first weekend for exactly. you know 2018 so people were really making um noise in church exactly. because it was the first sunday as well mm. most people had communion in their churches they were all dressed in white and it was nice to see the fact that everyone is thankful grateful to god for seeing us into another year but i hope that everyone is also poised to be a good citizen for ghana because this is a year where we have to see change in every exactly. aspect of our lives and our work attitude our time that is a big deal for me. It's a deal breaker, See George. See how time flies. So oh. if you just clock, let's say, a week yeah. of 2018. Yes. So it's quite surprising because it was just recently that we just <laughs> had this Christmas festivities and all that. And we just clocked a week. Yeah. So, so surprising, trust me. It is. But George, you know, when it comes to Ghanaians and our time, why would I ask you, so what time do you want me to meet you? And you say... Um, nine, Three, eight, four, nine, four, nine, ten, <laughs> eleven. I'm like, okay, what exactly is this. that? Can we start 2018 with exactly. good timing? If we say it's nine, What's let's be there at least eight forty-five, so that by nine the show can kick start. Because exactly. if I promise to be on your set at six and I didn't show up, you certainly will send us a tweet or some message to say, "Oh, TV three, why didn't you but start you know on something? time?" Event planners are changing the narrative. Yeah, when it's eight, they start at eight. Right. They are just changing right. the night. So let's see. I think And even the weddings, the pastors seem to, I mean, yeah. start a wedding with or without the bride. Exactly. And I think it's I think really it's changing some trends. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's we'll certainly just make us sit up. Mm -hmm. That's all. We hope that will be how our 2018 will go. But of course, George will have a lot of news for you from international to whatever, Sub-Saharan, the whole of exactly. Sub-Saharan you cover for Asia you. And all. Oh, certainly. And sports <laughs> will also join us later on in exactly. the show. So yeah. do stay tuned here on TV3. We have a lot more for you this morning. It's time for news on your authoritative TV station, uh, TV3. Thanks for staying along to our very first story. Exactly a year ago, he won the mandate of the Ghanaian people with an unprecedented win over an incumbent government. For years, President Tukufu Ado sucked the highest office of the presidency with determination and was rewarded as such. A year into office, we assess how the president has fared. Aye. Aye. Nana. Ado Dankwa. Tukufu Ado. He toppled an incumbent NDC government, making President John Drahmani Mahama a one-term leader. Though our challenges are fearsome, so are our strengths. Though our challenges are fearsome, so are our strengths. Americans have ever been a restless, questing, hopeful people. Ghanaians have ever been a restless, questing, hopeful people. Starting off his administration with a huge public gave, described by many as a scandal and an embarrassment for the country. With speed, 
he appointed the largest ministerial team in the history of the country, with many questioning his commitment to protecting the public purse. He called the bluff of his critics, defending it. My view is that our country is better served by having on board the, in the executive men and women who are capable of working to reverse the situation. The men and women I've, I've assembled are capable, they're strong, they're competent. It beats my imagination. A government that says the battle is the Lord's wouldn't have to go into that battle with so many ministers. What do ministers know that they don't get taught by the civil servants? It breeds division. It works against our effort to bring about national cohesion. It is an unnecessary dissipation of national brains and talent. This is a developing country fighting hard to extricate itself from the quagmires of poverty and underdevelopment. We cannot afford to allow brains to go waste simply because they don't belong. One scandal after another. At no point from my vetting did I feel that my confirmation of my nomination was at risk. Reality began dawning on President Akufo's government when its own started attacking institutions of state. The pro-NPP vigilante group Delta Force raided the Kumasi court and freed 13 suspects standing trial for the assault of Ashanti Regional Security Coordinator George J. in March, a major setback that rendered the president livid, many say. His directives seem to have been ignored by the party full soldiers. I have never accused her of being a lesbian. But it is in the internet everywhere. Everybody says she's a lesbian. I'm not the one who says it. <laughs> I didn't say so. I haven't even heard it. But they are saying it. It's all over. When dust was about settling, wranglings within his party and appointees surfaced with accusations of bribery. Then, an ardent supporter of the president, Kwame A. Plus, attempted to smear allegations of corruption on the two deputy chiefs of staff. The two were subsequently declared by the police and charged. One very unpopular ethnocentric statement, Deputy Greek Minister William Queto resigned after he was accused of making ethnic comment against people from the north. While all these had happened in the beginning of the president's tenure, he did not lose steam. His quest to fulfill his campaign promise was his primary focus. A major promise offering free SHS, launching one district, one factory. The one district, one factory policy will ensure an even spatial spread of industry. He maintains he delivered. Other opposition parties don't seem enthused about it. When there's going to be a heavy rain, you notice the way the clouds are forming. I am disappointed in what they've been able to do so far. It looks as if almost everything that they promised, they've come to try to do the opposite. And the only things they try to do as they have promised, perhaps is the free SHS. And even that one, I'm sure they are learning lessons now that if they had listened to good counsel and planned it well, the nation would have been better. Indeed, it is obvious that President Akufuado, in his attempt to manifest some of the campaign promises that he made, is actually running this nation on a slippery road that certainly is not the way it should go. For instance, no one has criticized that free SHS is a bad policy. What we are seeing is that there has not been clarity of ideas and policy towards the manifestation of the free SHS. Uh, they promised free education uh, and uh, they managed to implement a free SHS one uh, to the disappointment of uh, two-thirds 
of students uh, in SHS and many parents who believed uh, that with the award in the SHS they were also going to receive a free education. That was a big disappointment to uh, the two-thirds of uh, uh, beneficiaries of the senior high school that expected that a victory for Nana Kufado would translate into a free SHS for them. On corruption, he has a strong stance against his critics. There is nothing there about this desperate effort to stigmatize my government with corruption. It is not going to work. It is not going to work. Plugging corruption for a long time without doing anything about it is also an act of corruption. Okay. The current government seems to be thinking too much about the office of the special prosecu uh, prosecutor. Okay, it is good. It is an innovation in the fight against corruption. But I can tell you that the office of the special prosecutor cannot fight corruption alone in Ghana. So why do you put all your hope in one officer? who may not even be independent after all. The prosecutorial power of the land is vested solely in the hands of the attorney general. He sends shivers down the spine of those who have criticized him of corruption not to will when he begins to chase the rather more corrupt officials after he signed the special prosecutor law. Public officials, past and present, are held to account for their actions. Perhaps his signal to the international community of rather a self-reliant Ghana and Africa is pushing an agenda of Africa standing on its own. Our concern should be with what do we need to do in this 21st century to move Africa away from being cap in hand and begging for aid, for charity, for handouts. The African continent when you look at its resources, should be giving monies to other places. We have huge wealth on this continent. President Akufuado enters his second year in office with a promise of focusing more on homegrown solutions to Ghana's problems. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. And that was my colleague Komla Kluche's elaborative report on Nanado's one year in office. And still on the presidency, President Okufu Ado has credited the success of the Fourth Republic Democratic Dispensation to the Ghanaian for the resilient conduct in the face of trying political circumstances in the past 25 years. The president was addressing attendees of a national interfaith Thanksgiving service held at the Independence Square to commemorate Silver Jubilee anniversary of the Fourth Republic. The interfaith service was attended by First Lady Rebecca Kufuado, Vice President Alaji Mahmoud Baumia and his wife Samira Baumia, the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Kwe, and his wife, and the Chief Justice Sofaya Kufu. All living former heads of state of the Republic were also in attendance and participated in the service by reading scriptures for the day. On the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement, Sound the trumpet throughout your land. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. I'll tear down my bands and build bigger ones. And there I'll store my surplus green. <laughs> Both Christian and Muslim prayers were offered for leadership and the people of Ghana. President Ikufuado said the conduct of the Ghanaian citizenry is what is ultimately responsible for the sustenance of the 1992 constitution. Our goal has to be constant to fulfill the hopes and aspirations of Ghanaians who yearn for improvements in their living standards, in conditions of peace security and solidarity and to put Ghana onto the path to sustain progress 
and prosperity. We can hope for a brighter future because we are blessed with enormous wealth and human potential. He called for continued commitment and hard work for effective development of the country. And I'm confident that with a spirit of reconciliation, fairness, integrity and hard work, the best days of Mother Ghana lie ahead of us. Together, we are laying the platform for the evolution of a new Ghanaian civilization, which will give true meaning to the foundational values of freedom and justice on which our nation was conceived. It is exactly one year after Nene Kufu Ado was sworn in as President of the Republic. In the following report, my colleague Godfrey Tanam finds out how the country has fared in terms of security under President Kufu Ado's first year in office. President Kufu Ado defended the setting up of the National Security Ministry, stating it is important to have a ministry with direct oversight over national security emphasizing the need to have an official to be accountable to parliament. This came with criticism, with critics and analysts indicating that the existence of the Ministry of the Interior, Ministry of Defense, National Security Coordinator, and a National Security Advisor was enough. This criticism became intense when groups believed to be sympathizers of the NPP went on attacking spree, venting their anger on individuals and institutions. But a year after NPP's rule, has the creation of the ministry paid off considering the various security issues that cropped up in 2017? You want to mention that Major Mama's death is, one, is a dent on our existence. I mean, if you talk about the way we pride ourselves, saying we are peaceful, we are law-abiding, and so this actually re-echoed the fact that uh, we have to be careful with the way we deal with, you know, handle the security situation of the country. My question is that what lesson drawings do we draw from some of these things? We don't have to wait again for these things to happen in the next elections. And I think these incidences have happened over a period and we should be taking stock of them and getting solutions to them once and for all. Analysts are of the view the attacks in the year under review was expected as every year after elections has always come with similar attacks and takeover of state facilities. But dealing with these groups has been the biggest challenge for government, which they say 2017 presented an opportunity to holistically deal with the menace. Our intelligence setup is actually close to zero. The National Security Minister would have to put in measures to make sure that, you see, uh, we don't have to depend on brute force. Intelligence set up, it's adequate, it's working. The expectation for 2018 in terms of security is high, with a stern warning to government to tackle the most pressing needs in the country as these could become a security threat. The unemployment situation of our youth, because that is one single threat that I foresee that can paralyze this country. So they need to take very urgent steps and roll out their policies that they have promised Ghanaians and their communicators must know that elections are over. We are now running a government and they must know how they communicate that to even the lay person at the grassroots. Away from security, let's shift to the labor front where the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers have lauded the president for stabilizing the economy and the energy sector within his one year in office. The leadership of the unions are happy government has restored the nest and teacher training allowances and for releasing 16,000 Ghana cities to assess the work of district directors of education. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, was happy the president has been able to stabilize the energy sector and the economy. Adding, government has within one year facilitated the sign of the Special Prosecutor's Bill and initiating steps to implement major flagship programs. But the General Secretary, Solomon Kote, was worried government's release to the ministries and agencies were slightly slashed down within Nanado's one year in office. 
He cited a 1.2 million cities released to the National Labor Commission by later receiving less than 800,000 cities. If nothing at all, our power has also been stable and water has been stable, we could also say that except the petroleum you know, angle and then the electricity, that will give them some negatives over there. But by and large, you know, we have seen these things uh, come to pass. He again commended government for ensuring that the Tema oil refinery begins operations. Overhead in going to bring, you know, uh, crude, going to bring refined, you know, products already will go off and then it is within. And the average Ghanaian must have the feel of this. President of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers, Kinali Awudu, lauded government for restoring the training allowances and implementing the free SHS program. But was disturbed government within its one year has not motivated the teacher. If you introduce free SHS, you increase capitation grant, you send money to the district directorate of education, you are paying the teacher trainee allowance and all those things. And the teacher who is standing at the classroom to teach at the end of the month still go home crying. You will not be able to achieve that quality of education that you want. And now to the camp of the NDC, where former President John Domani Mahama has urged party members to be more united than ever before in order to win 2020 general elections. The former president blamed the disunity amongst their top party officials and their grassroots members for their 2016 defeat. He made the observation during the party's unity walk in Techiman in the Bonohafu region. Former President Mahama addressing thousands of NDC faithful at the Techiman Zongo Park said the NDC party will put in new mechanisms to ensure its grassroots are taken seriously in their decisions and in the selection of their MPs and all top officials. <laughs> Let us vote for people who majority agree are the best, so we can win the next election. The former president noted the NDC is never afraid of the special prosecution office created by the NPP, insisting it is not different from existing laws. We are the apostles and disciples of probity and accountability. And he said, if you are paying more and you want to subject us to probity and accountability, we don't have a problem. He was hopeful the NDC will come back to power in the year 2020. I believe that in 2020, by God's grace, the party will come back to power. As part of the unity walk, members of the NDC walked through some principal streets of Tichiman and ended at the Zongo Park. Still staying in the camp of the NDC, the former president, John Romani Mahama, says the MPP government has not fulfilled a single promise being made in his 2016 campaign. Former president Mahama says the MPP has lost focus in the administration of the state, hence every Ghanaian crying over poverty. My colleague John Sintichi reports. Former president John Romani Mahama joined the National Democratic Congress at a peace walk which lasted for three hours at the Techiman Zongo MA School Park in the Bono Ahafu region. He said the MPP deceived Ghanaians leading to the party's success in the 2016 general elections. Branch executive so, regional executive so, constituency executive so, national executive so, Yambo Mwadia Senye Beya, Nipa, Nipa Tom Nupeno, Omo Nyebe Yomo. And that's how we wrap up news on New Day. My name is Josh Quinn, and a very good morning to Emmanuel Chum, who is in Kumasi, and also my colleague Derek Ayensu, who is currently in the Northern Region. Thanks for watching. There's more news updates on our website, freenews.com. Good morning.
Welcome back. It's time for headlines and Johnny has joined me here. But we'll start off with the finder and it says sustained progress is our goal. As President asserts as Ghana marks Silver Jubilee of the Fourth Republic. Also, um, everyone can customize CPC chocolates. That's coming from the MDs of CPC, the person of Nana Ejenim Boating the First. Also, NIB is to enhance job creation. And then the U.S. government investment agency officials are going to visit Ghana today. Let's talk about the chocolate issue because course, it seems, yes. I mean, yeah. it topped the issues over the weekend. I, for one, was happy on one end that we were patronizing made in Ghana goods for whatever reason it was that was in celebration of someone's birthday or even just as a gift right. but I just wanted to be sure I wanted details as to who was funding that project mm. and at least the finder does carry the story to say that individuals who wanted the customized chocolates do pay for themselves and apparently even comes with a um, 10 percent i think additional cost if you brand it oh. as against no extra cost if there was not branded so mm. of course for me when i heard about the cocoa board um chief executive having to pay as much as 2913 ghana cds to get the chocolate branded from his own pockets for himself as a you know happy bird 60th birthday celebration mm. that for me was fine that's his own money he can decide what he wants to do with it and on the other side he was promoting made in ghana mm. goods but when the story broke i think the most worrying thing was like i said not knowing who was funding it because right. we thought if it was coming from our own coffers then that wasn't the right way to go but if it says if the story carried here is true that it was his own money then kudos to good morning i mean i, th yeah. I think that um, sometimes we just blow things out of proportion and uh, for me, I've I've seen some of these uh, mineral water, uh, you know, companies do similar yeah. things. Uh, right. I remember one of my uncles died, and uh, we had to go to I think it was Everpure, so mm -hmm. uh, and they had to they customize bread. with mm. this inspection on it and right. all of that. Um, but then you find people trying to cash in and and raise political flags, as mm. it were. Mm. I think that some of these things are not because. This is an innovation, okay. and this is not the first time it is happening. It's mm. happened before, um, and there are so many instances and examples mm. to, to note for that. Mm. Um, I'm happy that it is not coming from the uh, company itself that's exactly. sponsoring this, mm. irrespective of the fact that the CEO is 60 and they had to, you know, but the CEO himself is pushing this agenda. Mm -hmm. What it means is that it, it creates the avenue for everybody else to know that, oh yes, so if I have a, a birthday coming up mm. or if there's a funeral or there's a party, whichever it is, mm. I can customize this and have it right. shared or distributed for people and that could be a memorabilia mm -hmm. that people could use and, and I'm happy. Um, what what I'm not excited about is still the balance sheet of the, uh, the cuckoo board, you <laughs> know, the fact that we'll go and borrow, come and we, we, we produce cocoa mm -hmm. and the next moment we go back and borrow the cocoa farmers are not excited how much of these monies that are raised actually get to the people out there who till the debt to plant the cocoa seed to grow it to nurture it to make sure that we all have chocolate and, and brown cocoa and whatever it yeah. is to to drink and, mm. and eat so that's the overarching thing exactly. but when we try to water it down to uh, you know oh, how is. money is being spent to push this it doesn't help how does the farmer in say trapatre or wherever it is mm. benefit from this right. how, how does it benefit it from this so I, I think that we must try and lift the conversation above, above some of these you know and try to play politics with nearly mm. everything but Ghana's democracy the fourth Republican mm -hmm. democracy is 25 years mm -hmm. old. And I was excited at the bipartisan uh, organization mm -hmm. and the fact that all the living ex-presidents were there, you right. know, statesmen and everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I got so livid why we would put together these presidents at a very special function, mm -hmm. a national one, of course, mm -hmm. and not have lights. That's a security risk. Mm -hmm. I don't know who planned it, but if it's state protocol, I think they failed. Um, if the event organizers, I think they, they disappointed us. Yeah. Look, we had uh, ex-president Rawlings, ex-president Kufo, ex-president Mahama. Our sitting president was there. Mm -hmm. Our vice president was there. We had Chief other, you know, yeah. big people there, party executive from other places. The, mm. that, that's the crux of our democracy. Mm. And you put all of them in the dark. And when the president was making speeches, you could find people on the scaffolds trying to hold lights. And I'm like, wow, in, in the 21st century, yeah. 2017, yeah. we host this, we organize this, and, and it doesn't happen. And look, I'm not 
I, I, I think that we will just leave it and let it go. Mm. I wish we didn't have to leave it and let it go. Right. Because if we leave it, somebody will repeat it. So, Mr. President, a good morning to you. This is an affront to Ghana at 25. Mm -hmm. Whoever it was that organized this and didn't put out the lights, uh, and didn't put lights there for pro proper illumination, because the president was standing in the dark, yeah. literally. Yeah. Uh, everybody else who spoke was standing in the dark. Somebody must be brought to book. Were they giving money to provide lights? If they were giving money to provide lights and they didn't provide the lights, they must ask them questions. If they claim they are event organizers or if it's state protocol mm. and they didn't know that it will run late into the night, so they needed light and they didn't provide it, we must check their certificates and their expertise one more time. Number three, if it says that provision was made and then people didn't provide the light, somebody must be brought to book. And it is very, very important. I'm sure the Minister for Special Initiatives can take this up. Mm. Uh, the state protocol themselves. And good morning to you, Mr. President. Good morning. How are you? Uh, you must be offended about this because it is not the best, mm -hmm. Mr. President. For you to have stood in the dark, the whole world was watching you. It is not proper at all. Mr. President, how far? Good morning. Anyway, so let's do another headline from Daily Statement, which says, let's not undermine Ekufuado's credibility. That's ministers and others being cautioned. Also, Bronga Hafu exceeds May's production targets in spite of army worm infestation. Also, Ghana's best days are yet to come or are coming as President praises Ghanaians for the Fourth Republic. And then finally, the Minister of Information has been telling us the government is to expand the communication frontiers. Ah, but so the, yeah. the army worm, uh, it was yeah. defeated, right? Oh. Well, we said we, we heard it was under control, <laughs> and I'm sure no, that, no, no. that the that minister went to parliament says right. the army worm was defeated. Yes, but he people on the clear. ground also had a different perspective. They thought at least so, some. So the minister went to parliament to, to speak on truth. I can't speak for the minister. I can speak for the people I'm on the I'm ground because they are the what, actual... What, what have you heard? I, I believe there was yeah. some discordance between what the minister said and what okay. the people on the ground were So the expecting. army is still there. Yes, it is the, still okay, there. Just so maybe a little under control. Yeah. But we're happy that because, I mean, it threatened maize production in Ghana. And yeah. if we're hearing that Bronga Hafu, where we know the army worm was really... I mean, the infestation was on the rise. If they were able to exceed their targets such that they're even having to create more storage capacity, mm -hmm. then we're excited. At least we have some food to you know mm. rely on we certainly won't be going into a series the, the brown apple is the bread basket as, as yeah. we've known and so it's always exciting to know that they have um, you know food, food in abundance that we can all uh, cash in and, and enjoy yes, my challenge has always been the access routes to the farms mm -hmm. and we keep talking about it and we say agric is the is the hub engine of growth blah mm. blah blah and we, keep, we keep making paying lip service to agric but yeah. if you go into the farming areas uh, the roads, the access roads from the farm to the market right. uh, where people... So you find that, yes, we've been able to uh, plant, mm -hmm. we've been able to uh, put the uh, army worm under control, mm -hmm. we've been able to harvest, store, but how to bring it to those of us who will have to eat the food. Yeah. You will not find it. So over and over and over again, yes, we are harvesting, we are storing, but the price of food or a bowl of kinky, mm -hmm. a bowl of banku, uh, a, a bowl of porridge, whichever it is that you use maize for, will still shoot up because the food cannot get to uh, the, the its user. final destination mm -hmm. or end user smoothly. Right. And, and that's a big problem mm -hmm. where people, and there's even a bigger disincentive to those farmers. Yeah. Because look, I go and weed, I don't have combined harvesters and all of that. I go and weed, I till the dirt, I plant, I, I water it, there's no proper irrigation, plenty issues. Then I'm done, I get the maize and I can't even sell it to even break even, yeah. not to make profit. So that's the bigger bane. And I hope that uh, in 2018, the Greek minister will focus on some of these things. Because I say the Greek minister uh, because at the time the president was appointing the Agric Minister, he told us why he was appointing the Agric right. Minister. One year down the line, I haven't seen what, what the president said. Mm. One year down the line, if you, if you like, go on to YouTube or go on to TV3's YouTube page and take a listen to what the president said when he was appointing all our ministers. Mm. Now, one year down the line, try and measure. The president said A, B, C, D. And he mentioned their credentials and why he was putting them in those positions. Right. One year down the line, 
go and play back those tapes and check what they have done and see whether they are making progress or they are retrogressing. And I thank the president for doing that. It was the first time any president had done that mm -hmm. live on TV, mm -hmm. announcing it and saying, oh, I'm, I'm appointing Dr. Nana Majima as for my minister policies. for health. Mm -hmm. And because she has 20 years experience, mm -hmm. she has done this, she has done this. Yeah. And in this year, we want to do A, B, C, mm -hmm. D. And so, which is why we are bringing him. He has expertise. He has this. He knows the link, blah, 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 blah. So, if one year down the line, two years down the line, they are not doing it. Mm -hmm. They have no business being there. Mr. President, uh, good morning. When is the next ministerial reshuffle? Mm. Some of your men have to go because some of them, uh, they are either sleeping on the job or they are struggling to stay awake. And uh, we don't have time. Good morning, sir. Certainly. But, I mean, Honorable uh, Minister of Information, Mustafa Hamid, has also been talking about expanding communication frontiers. We don't know if that is the way to go, Johnny, because <sighs> for me... The fact that you're going to expand communication frontiers doesn't really solve any issue because oftentimes what we hear is people have the information but they refuse to give it out. And so you ask someone about a very popular issue that is going on, like right now we know, say, decongestion in Accra, and you would call someone from the AMA and put words to it and ask them a question, and the person will tell you, I'm not aware. And you're wondering if you know this is a hot topic, mm. this is what is trending, mm. if we, the citizens, are even interested, how can you sit aloof and say, I'm not aware? So for me, putting names in positions doesn't yeah. really solve the issue. The fact is, if information is going to be open for everybody, then we don't even need these communicators in the first mm. place because everyone will be abreast with the information everyone will be up to date with what is mm. going on and can give that information equally you see for me I think that this is also going to for example while I think it's a good it's a good mm. thing um, it's also going to increase the amount of money we pay uh, right. our salaries and wages and emoluments or whatever mm. it is but compare this to the passage of the right to information bill where I can walk into mm -hmm. any office, any state office, and demand for a request for information right. and get it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't need, uh, you know, all these people because we're talking about monthly or weekly briefing, uh, media briefing. Yeah. We're talking about uh, what? In all the ten regions. In all the ten regions and right. having uh, specific sector spokespersons. Yeah. That's a good idea. But if I can, if we have the press briefing. Mm. And I, I feel that I need some clarifications. And I put a question, and the spokesperson is not able to respond. Right. Can I walk to the office, mm -hmm. or uh, whichever office is there, and, and, demand. and demand for, for, the, right. for the document? So if the minister wants us to know that they are really interested in widening the frontiers of the information ministry or communication, whichever it is, as they want us to believe, he should push for the passage of the right to information bill. Mm -hmm where we all can work in it. Because I still maintain uh, passing or getting a special prosecutor and not having the right to information. What information am I going to give the special prosecutor mm. as evidence? Right. Okay? As evidence. As this is, yes, this is what I have. So you make an allegation. You have to prove. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to prove with? Mm. Is it just by hearsay mm. or what? So, yes, we have passed the special prosecutor's bill. Let's pass the right information bill. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the frontiers really pass the right to information bill? Mm -hmm. And let's know that you are committed to, to getting some of these things done. Because at the end of the day, if the communication works better for you, it will do, it will do well for Every the government. Yeah. I asked the, the AMA um, Municipal Coordinating Director, Mr. Uh, Ayay Date, and, and he told me, I asked him last Friday on Community Connect, that Chief, uh, how much is the decongestion de exercise mm. going to cost us as a city? Um, because you're starting today, Monday. So I asked him on Friday around 4 p.m., 3.34. And I asked him, how much is it going to cost us? He said they are now calculating how much it will cost them. And I said, whoa, you've been thinking about this. Mm. This press release was written before Christmas. Right. Okay, so Christmas has come and gone. The new year has come. Mm. We've celebrated. We're back to work in January. Mm. I was asking him this on the 5th of January. And he didn't have a clue how much it was going to cost. And I have the uh, tape there. So now, the municipal coordinating director mm. is the boss. Whether there's a mayor or there's no mayor, he is the man in charge. He's the, he's the senior most civil servant there. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't know how much it's going to cost, it, tell, it tells me around that time that they were now putting figures together. So how are they going to expand? How are they going to know that it's within range or not? Right. Who was going to approve? Were they sitting down together? Could they have done it earlier? Yeah. 
because they went yeah, out to they do should recce. have done it earlier because they went out to do recce the, the, the day, yeah. the morning before I, I called them, they went out to do recce, check all the places. Now, if you don't know how much it's going to cost you, then we certainly are in trouble. If that's the way we do our things in this country, then certainly we are in trouble. Because before we come on mm. air every morning, we know how much it's going to cost us to buy each single newspaper, yeah. uh, uh, every newspaper. Mm -hmm. How much it's going to cost us to have a beverage? How much it's going to cost us to put on the light? Mm -hmm. How much it's going to cost us to bring our workers on early days. call from home to work? Mm -hmm. So if we do not know how much things cost, and yet we're going to just <laughs> widen the frontage and do this and do that and do this, we're wasting our time. And this is what the conversation should be about. Mm. Good morning. Anyway, it's time to rant and we're talking about President Okufuado's one year in office. What have you seen? Are you impressed with the performance of the MPP government since they took over? Well, there's Daily Rant with George Quinan. Yesterday marked one year in office of the Kufuado led government and some policies were implemented. You can talk about the free SHS, which was faced with some public outcry due to the challenges that came with it. You can also talk about some boosts in the health sector, uh, the industries to mention, but a few. And so the question is, are you satisfied with government performance one year and its four year tenure? Welcome to Daily Rant. It beats my imagination. A government that says the battle is the Lord's wouldn't have to go into that battle with so many ministers. What do ministers know that they don't get taught by the civil servants? It breeds division. It works against our effort to bring about national cohesion. It is an unnecessary dissipation of national brains and talents. This is a developing country fighting hard to extricate itself from the quagmires of poverty and underdevelopment. We cannot afford to allow brains to go waste simply because they don't belong. When there's going to be a heavy rain, you notice the way the clouds are forming. I am disappointed in what they've been able to do so far. It looks as if almost everything that they promised, they've come to try to do the opposite. And the only things they try to do as they have promised, perhaps is the free SHS. And even that one, I'm sure they are learning lessons now that if they had listened to good counsel and planned it well, the nation would have been better. This desperate effort to stigmatize my government with corruption, it is not going to work. It is not going to work. Plugging corruption for a long time without doing anything about it is also an act of corruption okay the current government seem to be thinking too much about the office of the special prosecutor, uh, prosecutor. okay it is good it is an innovation in the fight against corruption but i can tell you that the office of the special prosecutor cannot fight corruption alone in Ghana. So why do you put all your hope in one officer who may not even be independent after all? The prosecutorial power of the land is vested solely in the hands of the attorney general. In fact, uh, Mecca said it's a sex for somehow because looking at the BIA FIBA, Oh, say, yeah, about government, you know, now, eh, say, now pressure be very well. Government, you know, so, now, you see, Kassem, eh, 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 now, nursing training allowance, say, na eh, can, eh, no, na eh, assem, na, eh, free education, ah, eh, can, say, see, ah, no, fit, kwame, kuma, time, obiyan, to me, I implement such a policy, she said, na government, way within a very short period of, Getting the power now. She said, "Now what you mean? I implement it. You see, I won't know it's Bia. Say, when you be Bia crown power, we crown power. You better imagine now. So I can say yes. We are both Bia or Ghana. Hey, my brother, you know something for me particular. If I'm paying school fees for my children, I'm okay with that. I like it. But if somebody want 
to have a children and the government will look after the children. Free HSS me for me, I don't like it. Somebody like it, fine. Okay, so are you satisfied with the government one oh, year in office? Medium, when we did this, we had to go to the morning. Because Ghana, if you had to go to the same way, you had to go to the same way, you had to go to the same way, we are not able to move on. Since Kwame Nkrumah time, we have been able to have free education. Now, a few pe, a few a group pe, we be the ababa ye, and we are the CDA. We the we are the CDA. Nana, we are the modern. Okay. So we more say score over ten. Over one nine. Huh? Over ten, like administration over ten. Oh, sixty years in the army, we we are not able to down quite ninety percent. Masa, what for me? I'm saying now is. They are saying it and I do, as that way. For me, that's what was for me, for me particular. Me, I don't want to have children and the government to be look after the children for me. It's a free HS for me, I don't like. Somebody can like it, but for me particular, I don't okay. like. So score him over 10. The, 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 the administration here. Yeah. One, one, one over 10. One over. Okay, one over 10. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know if it's, it's a four-year tenure. Yeah, so if year. let's say he has just he's just you know done one year, yeah. you should just maybe relax and watch. Him finish all the four years and see whatever maybe you want to see. Your expectations maybe will be met when he's out with the four years. For me, particulars, I'm insist, insist on, on a free HS. Everybody with his own. But me, for me, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing or can you so be any free SS? And not why? Into at least you enter what we enter was because with my free SS, that means you'll be okay in your bit my. When you soon say, Scan new crew, scan or crew, my answer at one day, and you better try the army. And to the air cassa and then you say, Bianca free education and the air cassa, and to your serenomous camera, they enter the army. Now, so okay, free education, you're bamboo cusco free. And yet, Ebia, Juma Bia, a bea, a benis cadia, shay a bamuno, Juma Niho, a bea den, Colamufisco ba, scabbin a debasho movie, a nutina casa. Okay, in Timmy Mamma Ebia, Moon's corner, over ten, over mana hang. My money five. Five over ten. Now, one's way. My money three over ten. Oh, me who is say a fine because Tom Naco four or so. Me call me by way near your operation, Yan Jimmy Tempest, Scra. And now, now don't so buy. I mean, my sister bought. The baby I'm coerced. That by now, now do buy. No, the mummy and so coerced. Eh, free. In the day, I'm going to say I'm not buying. In the day, now, my man, no, ten over one. Okay, now I didn't say on on so about no. She will be brave. We be case. On this so yeah, then on so. Oh, I buy. I feel no one year. One year, one year. No problem. We tell me free education. They are anyway. Minimum said three years in our Canada, or by any in our Tianya would train for man. I mean, now who is a one year? Oh, one year, no, me who is a why are they? Nemo, they may may certainly say a friend's name. Siano, a juma sum, a hard drink a crack, and see a serenity say, on Shahon almost okay, man. Now I'm ransom and my bow one, I ain't your jumanya, it be any jumanya, then Yama and Coffin. Now we are any assembly. Send here, okay, say, Obama Scabashi Kotoko, because say free H. S. S. No, Abadia. When we say Scana, Bacaco to our school hormone, or any idea, Bacaco show Kotoko, and see a professor say, and Yama and Coffin, sir, and my. Okay, say, I said, say, Obano Coscunaya, or the home aquarium, Eban over ten, make us a school over ten over nine. Oh, Mamma nine over ten. Now, what ten to one or the other? Make it. <laughs> it's been diverse views on the one year in office of the Kufado led government. Just know you watching home can also partake in this. Just log on to our social media platforms on Facebook is News on TV3 and on Twitter is a News TV3. Our WhatsApp line is also active at 050 803 5228. Just send us your comments. We're always ready to read them and share them with the rest of the world. Thanks for watching.
Welcome back and uh, let's get into the news review segment. The finder this morning says sustained progress is our goal. President has said as Ghana marks silver jubilee of Fourth Republic. Everyone can customize CPC chocolates according to the M MD. And the U.S. government investment agency officials visits Ghana today. The Daily Guide says three Johns joined Nana to mark 25th anniversary of Fourth Republic. Arrest me and Lodina, Muhammad Dare's president. The Ghanaian Times this morning says, Ghana marks 25th anniversary of Fourth Republic. J.J. Rawlings, Kufo, Muhammad joined Thanksgiving service. Scholarship Secretariat clears all arrears owed students abroad. That certainly uh, must be some good news. GBC clarifies establishment of 11 TV courts and Alaji Baturi laid to rest. Today, newspaper says no more arrest of DVDP number plate users. Jubilation at Gamashi over induction of Aquashonche and humans, animals, and uh, share water in Parambo uh, uh, Sawaba. And uh, the daily statement says Ghana's best days coming as President praises Ghanaians for Fourth Republic. Government to expand communication frontiers, according to Information Minister Mustafa Amid. And um, stop harassing MPP civil servants. Minister warns pro-NDC uh, directors. That's the front page of the Daily Heritage. The Daily Graphic wraps it up for us. It says, I am optimistic about the future. President declares a silver jubilee of Fourth Republic and Crouchy West District to pro produce basic medicines this year. Litigation stalls Brekum Electricity Stab uh, Station projects. My guest this morning, the MP for Ifutu constituency in the central region, the Honorable uh, Lawyer uh, Afenyo Market. Good morning. Morning, sir. And how are you doing, Chief? I'm good. I like your shirt. It's, it's lovely. Yeah. You're wearing Ghana. Yes. yes. Certainly. Yes. African wear. Yes. This is lovely. This is lovely. And also the MP for Adaklu, uh, Kwame Agoja is here. Honorable, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm all right. I like it. This is presidential. It's very presidential. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I beg, this, this is more of a, a citizen. More, do, you want me, citizen. do you want me to repeat what I said? No, uh, don't repeat no, it. No, let me repeat it. No, I said this is no, presidential. No, let me repeat it for oh, you. But this is what the president said. No, let me repeat it. What, what do you want to say? Brutus said, mm. Caesar was becoming ambitious. Mm. And any man who is ambitious must die. You want him to die? No, no he's not. Has dead. he told you? Have you seen any ambition in him? But let him be in a small corner. He has. He has. He's a, a noble. Dress, he has a dress calm, sense. He has a fine yeah, dress sense. Humble so person. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Um, Twenty-five so years. There's only president who would have to wear this. I said this is presidential. Ah, okay, yeah. Your yes. your GM was wearing oh, something. Good luck. Jonathan was wearing the, 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 the similar thing. <laughs> Uh, so you, so you are, you are. So you do are, you have presidential so, ambitions? Oh, please, my friend. <laughs> why, why are you? What are you? Please, are you? I thought you were protecting, oh, staying yeah. away from Mister. Oh yeah, of course. No, but, no, but, but you, you it's are. all right. Let's proceed. <laughs> Well, you are, you are, you are getting away from Please, it. Anyway, good morning, gentlemen, one more time. So, 25th anniversary of the Fourth Republic yesterday, uh, the Thanksgiving service happened. I don't want to pick your thoughts. Let me start with you, Kwame, first. Uh, 25 years down the line, what's on your mind, the service and everything else? Well, thank you very much. Good morning to your cherished viewers, especially those from Adaklu. Good morning to my good friend. Um, well, I think Ghana needs to, we need to pat ourselves uh, at, at the back for uh, the sustained democracy over the past uh, 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 few de decades. Uh, I must first of all take the opportunity to congratulate uh, the architect of, mm. of this. Uh, we must uh, admit that despite uh, everything, mm. uh, it, it took a, a military ruler uh, in the person of President J.J. Rawlings to institute this uh, democracy mm. that has become the one that has been sustained. All the ones started by the people who claim not to be interested in uh, military uh, adventurism failed uh, uh, miserably. Uh, we want to also congratulate Ghanaians as a whole because um, it, it is only because Ghanaians accepted the fact that uh, the path forward is, is uh, a, a multi-party democracy and they've all bought into it and uh, we must be proud that uh, it is no longer an issue in Ghana. Parties can go and come, mm. presidents can go and come, but what we want to see is uh, uh, a sustained progress. We need to see our steps going up and up. And eventually, one day, we would all be where we want to be, where, uh, I mean, uh, any, any child can go to school without any hindrance, that uh, access to health care is no longer an issue, that the roads are no lo longer death traps, 
that the average person, especially, especially young people, can find job. What I saw over the weekend, uh, over the last week, where we, were, we are being told that 84,000 uh, uh, people applied, that is no, no, no. That is the tip of the iceberg. Those were the people who were shortlisted to attend the program. So all those who actually applied and were disqualified were not counted. Meanwhile, they took 50 cities from, from them as well. All those who actually qualified but were not asked to come for the, 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 the event were also not included. We estimate over 300,000 people probably did. I'm taking the opportunity to urge government. 50 cities for that online application is up and above what is expected. They should probably give them uh, for everybody 40 cities back because I can't see what uh, 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 how do you call it uh, immigration right. is going to do with the 50 cities mm. for uh, over 300,000 uh, people. Mm. This it, it is true. We, we don't know the 300,000. Well, I'm telling I'm telling you that I mean the, the number of people shortly said in, if I take the number of forms I had right. people claiming I, I mean thinking I can help them. Okay. The proportion that were, were, were called for the interview, okay. I can work it backwards and tell myself that perhaps about 300,000 300, people. And okay. I'm saying that it should never be a, 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 an opportunity for any government mm. to take advantage of young people in the name of recruitment and take 50 cities. Mm. It's far too much. They should give them back 40 cities as, as, as a rebate because it is not, nobody can justify the, 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 the attempt to take 50 cities. What did the immigration service uh, do? Mm. Online application. The people came and formed lines. Nobody gave them any uh, water or any, anything. Mm. And this is a country where the young people need, need support. You knew you could only recruit 500 people. Mm. I believe if government want to be, to, be, to be compassionate to these young people, they should give them back for, for this. Raise a question in parliament and ask the, uh, the DG of the immigration service to be, to be called to answer one of if, the even, even Even before we, we get it, government knew they can only employ f uh, uh, 500 mm. people. Why, why take that, that, that amount anyway, of money from them? So, so back to the Ghana 25, um, Ghana's fourth republic at 25. You mentioned some critical areas. Yeah. Do you think that we, we are measuring up to the tax we set for ourselves 25 years ago? Uh, and President Mahama says this will be the last of, of you know, it will be the, the, the last of all the uh, republics that will be truncated by any means or whatever it is. Well, I, the, the fact that myself and my brother can disagree even fundamentally on anything. Mm. But we are really good. We are actually uh, good friends. Tells me that the potential of us getting down to the, uh, the situation where somebody thinks that democracy doesn't work again, that we need to uh, go back to another form of government, mm. is, is, is unlikely. However, mm. the only potential is what that can bring about is what I was touching about. Okay. When the young people in this country believe that there's no hope and whether you attend school or you learn some trade, there will not be no hope for getting a job. That will be the only threat. But as long as we can address those things, I am sure we are on, on, the, on the right path. Uh, thank you very much. Council, your take on, on this one. Uh, Fourth Republic at uh, 25. Very interesting ceremony we had yesterday at the uh, Independence Square. What are your thoughts? Well, thank you. Um, can I have your leave to say something about... Uh, the late Alajib Right, please. Right. Um, my condolences mm. to the Biri family. Um, Alaji was more than a father to me. You know, we engage in all forms of banter right. on set. Mm. But he will quickly, after the event, advise you and got me to appreciate the fact that though we belong to different political ideologies, we need to create a relationship. We must have friends. And... Uh, I was surprised because I saw him as a different person until we drew closer. A time came in my political career that uh, I thought all was gone. I was surprised to have received this call and he came to my house and spent an hour with me. Wow. I was, I mean, since then, even in campaigns, he would call me, Makin, Ugozo, Miawenu, and all that. And uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, we became very close. and. In spite of all you debate, say, look, that's the debate, but we need to keep relationship. It reminds me of uh, the saying that distinctions amongst men exist for the purpose of subordination. Right. But all the eminence of situation make us forget that we are all the same. For he who is placed at the lowest ebb of fortune's wheel is equally entitled to our regard. Your As the time will come. You're waxing poetic. This the morning. wisest of men knows not how soon. Mm. 
when all distinctions, save those of goodness and virtue, shall cease, mm -hmm. and death, the grand level of all human greatness, reduce us to the same state. May Allah so rest in perfect peace. Amen. May he, may he rest in perfect peace. And uh, our hearts and our prayers are with the family of the deceased. Uh, he paid his dues, and uh, yeah. yes, may he rest in peace. We, some of us had to listen to him back in the day on Radio Gold and, and decided that we'll choose this path called journalism. So may he rest in peace. Yeah, just, just before he comes in, just also to add, I should have done that earlier, just to say he, he was uh, one of the, the finest. I mean, he believed in his cause. And, and state his cause. Uh, may he so rest in perfect peace. peace. Amen. Right. Oh, um, yes. <coughs> first of all, it's important to recount where it all started before we got to the Fourth Republic. And I wouldn't go far. I would just start from where the military adventurists truncated a democratic system. Mm. And after 11 years or so, they themselves realized that that path could not be sustained. So there were, there were compelling reasons for them to return the country to democracy. Mm. So uh, to me, uh, Rawlings and his uh, followers cannot be praised per se for ushering us into the Ford Republic. Why not? They had no choice. They, came, they, came, they came to overthrow a constitution. They came to overthrow a civilian regime. Mm -hmm. So, if for nothing at all, they disturbed our system, and there can't be any better governance under any military regime. That being put across, I think that we've all done uh, well. Mm -hmm. 25 years, we've accommodated each other. You know, anytime we had elections, the fear of it degenerating into something else uh, had been said that by our collective will, we were able to manage it. So it means that as Ghanaians, we, we, we want to have this democracy sustained. But the most important thing also mm -hmm. is we identifying with the Ghanaian dream. The truth of the matter, Johnny, is that many of us mm -hmm are looking first at our individual interest and welfare than the Ghanaian dream and the interest of Ghana. Forgetting that it is only when Ghana is successful mm. that would benefit from the success there too. So it is a struggle for our individual welfare, mm. but the state is benefiting from none. Mm. I, it is my hope that we would refocus our attention. There will be a new national orientation. Mm whereupon the belief in the Ghanaian dream will become paramount. And that one should be across. If the dream in the, in the, 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 the belief in the Ghanaian dream mm -hmm. is paramount, I can tell you all these issues of mismanagement of public funds, all these stories of corruption and all that would be minimized. We go to Europe. We go to Europe. And you see the attitude of Europeans. Mm. You go to the Middle East, you see the attitude of these people. You go to the United States, you see their attitude. It is their nation first. Mm. How many of us, even professionals, how many of us are mindful of the payment of our taxes? Mm. There are things that doing for the states, mm. we see it as a burden. Right. All right? Yet we at the same time need the social intervention programs to be rolled out for our benefit. Where would the state get the money from? Yes, my brother was talking about unemployment. It's very scary. It is. Very scary that you want to recruit 500 and you have 84,000 people applying. For we, the political leaders, the pressure on us, the pressure on him, the pressure on me, all over. How can the state take care of these people? So I think that the dream of Mr. President and his government mm. must be supported by all. The dream of growing the private sector. Mm. The dream of helping put in place the necessary support structures, systems that would enable us to take off. If we have the systems in place mm. and the private sector is growing, I'm sure 
the private sector can take some of these people. Many people are graduating from our universities, mm -hmm. our technical universities, our polytechnics, but the jobs are not there. It isn't something that started today. Mm -hmm. Okay? But long, long ago. And it's been piling up. Right. So let us give ourselves that new dream mm -hmm. that it is Ghana that must first succeed. Right. If Ghana succeeds, you would, would all benefit. If TV, TV3 succeeds, workers of TV3 will benefit. Exactly. If TV3 is suffering, mm -hmm. workers will suffer. And that is how we should look at it. Um, look at how we've responded to government interventions, like mm -hmm. Maslock. Mm -hmm. Kufo brought Maslock. How many people took Maslock facilities and pay back? Be it under MPP or NDC regime. Mm -hmm. The Poverty Elevation Fund, first introduced by Rollins, those who took it, did they pay? They didn't pay. We benefit some government institutions, mm. public uh, corporations. Mm. We see it collapsing. Mm. We but, don't but, care. But, but there are people who are put in charge of these things. No, no, no. But I am. Mas, Maslok has I am, I am, a whole system no, that must what, go and what collect are, their money. Oh, oh, uh, if you, if you, tr we trivialize it that way. Mm. I'm looking at it in a general right. perspective. Mm. Yes, an individual would have to go and take it. Right. But the will, it's not, I mean, people would want to ambush you with politics. Mm. So at the end of the day, it is like business as usual. Mm. I'm looking at it generally. Right. Our attitude. Your responsibility to the Exactly, state. because it is the state. You expect the state to take care of you. Right. But you're not ready to sacrifice for the state. Mm. And this has nothing to do with CPP, MPP, NDC, and all that. If the system itself, mm. we have that attitude, it doesn't matter with government. Us. It will not benefit. Let, let me bring in... So, uh, it is my hope mm. that as we celebrate the day, as we say that, look, we've done well for 25 years, we will likewise have attitudinal change mm. and think about the Ghanaian dream. Attitudinal change, Ghanaian dream. Kwame, so he mentions the Ghanaian dream. Prior to the Thanksgiving service, the president put together, you know, party executives from other, you know, leaders from all the other political parties. And for me, it was the very first time such a thing was happening at Stanford Correction. But is that an indication that we are beginning to have a Ghana dream? Is that what you see? Well, I, I don't think, uh, well, I think I, I don't have any problem with, with, with uh, building upon that. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, President Mahama uh, met political leaders and religious leaders and other things. There's nothing wrong if the current president uh, continues to do that. I also don't have any problem when, if he takes the step to maybe dialogue with them uh, of the, uh, uh, about the way forward. But the back stops with him in terms of some critical interventions. And I agree with my brother that we need to have a different mindset. Mm. That is why I brought in the issue about immigration. Right. Let no one be deceived. Government, no government, mm. can employ all the teaming youth that we are producing from our institutions, even th those learning trade. Right. It is how many policemen can you have in one country? Mm. How many military men? How many immigration officers? I saw over 3,000 people in Ho lining up for immigration. I doubt even 50 people will be taken from Volta region mm. to join the immigration service. In Accra, it was 15,000. Exactly. So the, 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 the way forward is to, like he's saying, if TV3 expands its network, that can do all sorts of things. Mm. They will necessarily hire more people. Right. People from Ghana, uh, 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 journalism school, university, and other things, even professionals, researchers to do all sorts of things. Mm. So that we have no choice than to ensure that we, 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 we build and expand our private sector. Who must lead that charge? It is, it is, it is government. But you see, this, this, without doing politics, mm. I can't see where I sit right now. I can't see how we are going to achieve that apart from the rhetorics. When you look at 2017 budget, and I'm not blaming this government alone. Mm. When some uh, ministries only expended, or were, uh, I mean 11% of their budget. Mm. When they owe private sector, he's a private sector operator, I'm a private sector operator. Right. You carry out services to government, mm. and for one year they don't pay you. You are owing a bank. You have to lay off your people. Mm. So you can't pay your taxes and other things. How on earth are you expecting but to... the ministry has the money. They are holding on well, to they it. Well, they don't <laughs> even... That's what I'm saying. They got 11% release. So they don't also have the money. Okay. So we, we, we need to sit down and find out how we can get these things done. Indeed, indeed. The only thing I fear about 
another truncation of our democracy is if we don't deal mm. with the issue of young people getting frustrated about the fact that the future doesn't tell them anything that one day he or she is going to get a job to make a living. Mm. That is the only way I'm going to say when they give up, mm. then we are all in trouble. Right, let's get into Parliament now. You can join the conversation via WhatsApp. The number will show up on your screen shortly and uh, be part of the conversation uh, wherever you are from across the world and in Ghana especially. So last Friday in Parliament, uh, Mr. Speaker put together a committee of five to investigate the alleged or supposed expert extortion uh, and for people sitting closer to the president. The committee has been set. Um, your expectations? Um, are you excited about what we're doing? Let me start with you, Council. Well, <coughs> you see, Johnny, um, sometimes uh, when issues come up, Parliament, we panic. Mm. And instead of following our procedure, we tend to do things. And to me, I have a problem. Mm. We have our rules. Mm. We have the Constitution and other laws. It's our duty, no matter what, to comply. I have my own problems mm. with the manner the application for recall was even entertained. Because the said constitutional provision mm. clearly talks about meeting, okay. request for a meeting. Mm. A meeting can only be held when parliament is in session. We have completed a session and a meeting is being held. To me, it was just so in inappropriate. inappropriate for us to have convened. But be that it me, as it did me. The point is, why five member committee? If you follow the whole procedure, because all of us were in haste, Kwame is here, and if I'm wrong, he can correct. Did we even adopt? When during the debate, the emotion was moved, seconded by Okujetua Blackwa, the minority came in, the minority leader came in to uh, debate, mm. and then the majority leader raised a preliminary objection mm. regarding procedure that Mr. Speaker should throw away the motion on grounds of procedural irregularity. Right. Then Mr. Speaker comes to rule on the procedural irregularity, then proceeds to agree with the position for a committee to be set up. Mm. My point is, did we agree as a house? Mm. Because I didn't see, I didn't see the house mm. agreeing. Because after the ruling, the debate was truncated. Okay. Because it was a ruling that the, the majority leader urged on Mr. Speaker mm. to make on the preliminary legal issue that he had raised. Because Mr. Speaker asked him, what do you want? Okay. He says, I want you to dismiss the motion on grounds of irregularity. Mm. So to me, once Mr. Speaker came back mm. to rule on the application, the next step was the debate. Right. Then... We, the, a committee was formed. Mm. And then, bam, again. So to me, w what, what had parliament, anybody studying our procedures, proceedings, mm. wanting to understand, any political science student will be lost. The same thing happened when we're dealing with this uh, uh, half-hour motion. Right. We say we are masters of our own rules. The provisions are there. We need to follow. But some way, somehow, well, uh, it's been done. Mm. Let us see how the committee is able to do it well. Five-member committee, I hope that the outcome of their report, mm -hmm. whatever that will be uh, 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 discussed, the investigations or the inquiry or whatever, those who have concerns eventually would accept okay. the, the outcome. After mm -hmm. all, that is what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a trade uh, and industry committee which is made up of about 19 mem 18 members. Okay. To me, that select committee of parliament could have dealt with this matter. Mm. Because it is made up of the majority and the minority, which is still bipartisan. Mm. So the chairman or the leadership of the committee mm. could have invited the trade ministry and its minister mm. to come for what we call hearing. Okay. They can summon them mm. and do hearing. It's happening in the Bank of Ghana case. Finance Committee but, but, invited but some, them for Somebody will say there's a precedence in the uh, issue involving Honorable Mahama Ayariga, uh, the committee of five that was set up to investigate the bribery allegations. Parliament can set up special committees, I agree. Right. But the matter in issue 
has to do with the trade ministry. Okay. And we have our own committees. You see, you, you, if we are not careful, we'll be setting a bad precedence okay. that anybody would want to take advantage of. I am not, I do not belong to that school that believes that oh, when there is any issue, anything at all, just because we want to address it. Mm. But procedure is as important as the substance. So you're saying that this was not done properly? We didn't do well. Mm. And I, I wouldn't hide that. We didn't do well. Mm. We didn't do well at all. At all. As a house. The executive, when confronted with an issue, is able to relax to deal with it. Mm. Judi judiciary, with all the challenges, they were able to do... Why is it that when it gets to parliament? What, what caused it? What could have caused it? Was the speaker under pressure or...? No, no. I, I, collectively, <laughs> I think we're... All of us were... You are were, pressure. Were, would I call it pressure? <laughs> you know politicians, eh? Yeah. When I, somebody I is down. I when so, know. We know the way politicians behave. When somebody is down, mm. everybody wants to hack that person, forgetting mm. that it may be their day to also get down. <laughs> so let, let, that, that, that's the way we behave let, and people let, take advantage of us. Let me come to Kwame. Because I don't see why, mm. Johnny, I don't see why, why the rules so demand mm. that follow step A, B, C, and D. You get the point? Mm. Yet, we at any point would want to uh, set aside the rules. Mm. I, I don't see why we should do that. Right. I see. Uh, Kwame. And Must Muntaka <laughs> is somebody who is uh, an apostle of the rules. I remember I've checked the hands at, and okay. I, at the appropriate time I will refer him to. I have a number of occasions where he's risen up on a point of order against me in parliament mm. and say, Mr. Speaker, Afenio Markin knows better. He should mm. follow the rules. Mr. Speaker, point of order. So, so you are he wondering why the, on this occasion he he is not following the rules. Is that it? We all did not follow the rules. Okay. All of us. Okay. And it is important we respect our rules. Okay. Thank you. Kwame. Yeah. Well, um, I, I believe uh, uh, whatever happened in Parliament uh, last week uh, was appropriate. I am not particularly sure of the, I mean, he, he might be right that maybe we didn't follow one pro, uh, a particular procedure in terms of uh, the, the process in, in Parliament. But this is an issue that is, um, uh, has got the attention of the country. Um, and why do we even have to uh, go to Parliament with it? Because when the thing happened, you remember, uh, it, it started in Parliament. It was during a committee uh, um, review of uh, uh, a sector's budget mm. that this issue was raised. Right. It was denied outright okay. by uh, officials of that ministry, mm. uh, the uh, trade ministry trade initially. Ministry. Okay. Then when, we, when they came to the plenary, mm. we showed them a letter suggesting that they, were, they, 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 they had a hand in it because the letter was written on their letterhead. Then they said, oh, okay. There was something like that, but we had no hand in it. Then, when we probed further, when we started showing them a further document, they said, okay, something happened. Mm. We took money, but the money was expended. Okay. When you go to court, mm. and a judge sitting in there knows, has got a set of facts, mm. and you lie on the first occasion, and he, he discovered it, and uh, proved to you you lied. The second one, the third one, nothing you will say again would, would he agree, except to go and find out the, the truth. We were in par uh, uh, Parliament can uh, easily sit on, on, on this uh, thing. Our standing orders allow us to set up a, uh, an ad hoc committee right. to look into this uh, matter. Mm. The fatal attempt by the, the majority leader to arrest the, 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 the motion. Not win a uh, committee and and, 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 and the, the thing is that the to deal uh, with they were even lucky. Okay. They stopped there because we're going to show them a couple of Supreme Court rulings mm. that even clarify the issue. If I come to even a, a court within a wrong uh, title of something, okay. doesn't actually make the case a useless case. We need to still look, look at the substance. But, but the speaker gave a chance for the... the no, no, we did. I, I mean, we're going to cite yeah. uh, the Supreme Court uh, Okafor and uh, uh, State uh, 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 Limited, 1996 uh, rule, which somebody was trying to strike out a, a case. He, I mean, he's a lawyer. No, I mean, on that, since you are talking mm. of law and precedent, right. with the greatest respect, yeah. There is a latest ruling of the Supreme Court okay. in the matter of UTAC, okay. UEW chapter eh? mm. against Supi Kofi Kwaira, okay. UEW, and the Ministry of Education. Okay. I was in that matter. 
the issue of procedure in invoking the jurisdiction of the court mm. was the subject matter of that trial. Okay. The point here is that the Supreme Court held that no matter the substance of your matter before the court, you, it is important for you to invoke the jurisdiction of the court appropriately. Mm. Hence, the Supreme Court's position quite recently was that Superior invoking the jurisdiction of the High Court mm. through an originating summons mm. was not appropriate and that you should have done so through a writ. So this 1996 decision where procedure was immaterial is a position that the Supreme Court has departed from. I can also give you a matter of Jesse Texan, mm. which was decided 5th December 2016, okay. where again, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court was wrongly invoked. The court held that, look, they sympathize with the plaintiffs, but we are sorry, those on the court of sympathy, coming to us with the substance yet, but the form in which it took, you erred. So go back. We will not entertain you. That, that so, but I'm, I'm just, because you talk yeah, law, yeah, yeah. Right. if you were going to rely on this, which is no. a 1996 ruling, I know about this case, yeah. But I'm telling you that the court, the Supreme Court, has still departed okay. from this right. this approach that yeah, you are what, trying what to. What I'm saying is okay, that sure. Thank a couple, you, of, yes, a, a couple Thank of things you. the majority leader attempted doing was was wrong in a, in the first place. In Parliament, he knows how do we do attendance? You take a, a, a list of members okay. and then everybody sign against his name. Okay, that is attached to uh, and then the, the Hansa Department uh, takes it and then they they tick who came to Parliament. Right. So his argument that a list of members of parliament upon which some members signed mm -hmm. against, which is what they said, find list of signed members. Okay. And he was trying to argue that as long as there were members on there who didn't sign means that you have at, uh, uh, those people were, were not there. Were not there. Okay. That, is, that, is not, uh, that is completely wrong because that is actually an act that we, a, a procedure in, in the parliament. Okay. I don't go to parliament and take a pen and write my name in full before I sign. Okay. They give me a list. So maybe today and I you find your name. Oh, exactly, to. exactly. Okay. That, that was that, that was wrong. So the premise on the the, the majority leaders' uh, objections were not even grounded in what we do in Parliament, as a, as a matter of fact. But I I I, I must say. Uh, the but have you yielded speaker, to the the the, 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 the no 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 because the, the ingredients of that case were maybe different from. Well, no, 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 but, no, but, no, but, no, but no. we've gone beyond the procedure now. The, the committee yes, is in place. The committee is in place. So why so, why do we need to do this? Look. The government must be very worried. Eh? They are in government now, so they think that they can defend everything. When in a country, and I can, let me confirm to, you, uh, confirm to you, there were expatriates who attended that function, who are urging people they want a refund because they think they were fleeced. They are urging who and who? They are urging anybody who can get them get a refund because, you see, you want private sector involvement. But, but on what basis did they pay the money then? And they, why, why they, would they want they, a they, refund at this oh, point? Oh, look, every business... Look, if I, I, I do approach uh, my brother, he, I mean, if, if I think he can, he, he can help me do something. And if he can, he will do that. If it becomes a problem, if it becomes an issue that I needed to pay to get it to, into his office, though I know him, I know I can go there, if I want to do business, mm. maybe I don't have a choice because that is what his office legitimately is saying, that you have to pay to get to his office. Right. And that is why I think government needed to be really concerned that, one, the laws of this country explains what happens in terms of what government receives from people. That in terms of if government wants tax, it's parliament that says that you can charge this person this amount of money. Right. Even if it's a gift, mm. you need to decide what you have received and whether you've paid tax on it. In any case, if the expatriates at, uh, uh, appeared at the function and decided, oh, for my proximity to the president, mm. I will donate mm. 100,000. There would have been no problem with it. But they were, there was a pre-planned decision to take 100,000 or various sums of money from them mm. before the sitting. So it is something that government have already determined. Mm. And th in this case, government in the sense that the letters were written on a government uh, headed, letter. Uh, headed letter. So in that, case, in that case alone, I think eventually we would expect somebody to know that there were two, at least two breaches that must must be must be addressed, mm -hmm. and so if government communicated, are you the uh, uh, no, but we, you and I are not even part of the committee, so we are free to talk at the at the, at the moment. They are no, not even but, sitting. But, uh, they, are, they are not even no, sitting. But you are prejudging. No, I'm saying that in my view, mm -hmm. in my view, mm -hmm. there's who, there's, who, there, who there's a prejudicial? breach. There's a breach of some of the laws in this country. Mm -hmm. The people went there, asked 
to pay an amount of money before they sit down. If they went there and donated 100,000 on their own account, then they would have... And I'm asking, so if collecting the money is wrong, then giving the money is equally wrong, is it not? No, but if you so, took somebody... So on what, on what grounds? Ah. Because there's the offer, there's the acceptance, the consideration in between. Well, What that, consideration that, did they raise? I will give you, with, I will give you an example. Right. And I'm using your platform again to make this appeal. DVLA, today, tomorrow, give everybody whose money you've taken on the first aid kit to them. But, Otherwise, but, but you are, you are, you are a member of the DVLA. Hold on. I'm saying that I don't want to drag the matter. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to court with you. He can be my lawyer. Okay. You fleeced Ghanaians 180. Is that the way you can you engage a lawyer? Hold on. Eh? Is that the way you engage a lawyer? <laughs> okay, I'll come. Is that the way you engage a lawyer? I'm giving you a notice that I'm going to. Is that the way you engage a lawyer? For you, I can engage. No, no, no. But, 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 <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> let, let, let him finish his point. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Johnny. Yes, yes. Johnny. Let, let him finish his point. Answer that. Kwame knows that. Kwame knows that. As a member of parliament, if you raise an issue, a committee has been set. In spite of all the concerns we have about the regularity of order, or otherwise, mm -hmm. please going further into the to, matter. Into, yes, the substance oh, of. Oh no, no, I mean in all fairness, okay. Kwame. I mean, okay, we are all in this go, game together. No, I'm not going to go. It, it any could happen to you tomorrow. Of it could course, happen to of anybody. Course, of course. Now that the committee has been set up, mm. let's allow let them. Let's add that man. Yes, yes. I mean, yes, yes. in all fairness, I'm, fair, fair, I'm, fair happy, I'm happy with that. All I'm saying, you can deal with the DVLA matter. I conclude on that part. I'm saying that. It's similar to what DVLA have done. Okay. They, the driver didn't volunteer to pay 100 and, 100 and, uh, uh, eight CDs. Mm. They decided to take the money, mm. which we some of us considered illegal. But, but you are you are you are yeah. with the DVLA. Yes. So we are asking them. Mm. They have. I'm I'm thanking the minister for suspending the, the whole thing. But they must give a refund to every driver, and also the Ghanaian public want to know since government says they are unaware of the the, the decision to take the money. Since government, uh, the, the board said they are unaware of, of that, we want to know who at DVLA authorized the charging of the 108 uh, uh, Ghana, uh, Ghana City. We are not going to leave this matter uh, lie down that way. We want to know who actually would have cost the, the driver that much of money. And by the way, the money was paid into government account. So was government going to consume that money since they didn't request uh, that, that money? So DVLA, I said... My lawyer is, 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 has been informed publicly <laughs> about that. Give the people the refund or we are coming after you heavily. Mm. We are coming after you heavily. No. Uh, uh, yes, and, counsel, and, counsel, and, counsel, please. And, yes. and so to um, conclude, oh, just to, just okay, to conclude sure. on this. If the, 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 the expatriate went there and donated the money ah, freely. We have moved. We have oh, moved. no, I'm saying that it's no, similar. Kwa, it's similar. Kwa, Kwame, Kwame, so, yeah. Kwame you, are, you, are, you are on a slippery ice. Please, to be fair. To oh, add, conclude no, on no, that. you are, you are. To go back, you are just walking on a slippery ice. No, I am Please. not going to make say anything prejudicial. I'm saying that the the expatriate community that attended the function did not donate money. They paid money based on 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 an agreement. They would maybe they, they would have gone there not pay any money if. They were, they were Kwame, you've made this point earlier. Why yeah. do you want to be repetitive? So, so that it's quite it is okay. clear. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's quite if clear. you are addressing <laughs> me, I've heard you. <laughs> it's quite if clear. it's okay. about so, the viewers, you've heard so, me. So, <laughs> so, so, gentlemen, but, but Kwame, I find it interesting because you uh, represent Parliament on the DVLA. Uh, no, I'm the ranking member of uh, 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 Road and Transport. Exactly. So, I mean, you could just call them to order from where you sit. Well, Parliament is, Parliament is, is, is on recess uh, and... Uh, it's difficult to get them. But you see, who says the members, the member of parliament's work is only mm. uh, on the on the floor of parliament? Mm. He, he does that. We all no, do. No, I'm not saying that your yeah. work is just on the floor of yeah. parliament. I'm yeah. saying that yeah. we could, we could call them to. Yeah. Yes, you could call them. You could place a call to, Mr. Them. to, you, to you, Mr. Buzia. Yeah. Or, 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 or. You should use. No, the, I, wa I want to you avoid. Use your power. I want your to avoid to personalizing the thing. Okay. Currently, we, we are all at a loss since government says they are unaware. We don't even know. Whether maybe it was a mistake that they charged the, the, the money. So, mm. me, I refuse to mention any name because as far so, as So, by you, you are saying that the money should be refunded? Immediately. Okay. Today. I today, thank you. They, sh they should give, they uh, should everybody, give everybody, everybody a refund. Okay, thank you. Page two of the uh, statement, that's perhaps what we'll wrap, wrap up with. The government says it will expand communication frontiers. That's according to Mustafa Amid. And it says government is to expand its communication frontiers so that the media can reach government officials for information in a timely manner. Uh, information minister has disclosed this uh, to this end he said government has decided
decided to appoint spokespersons for each of the five cabinet uh, subcommittees, including legal and governance, economy and finance and infrastructure, as well as security and social services. So this is what they said. It says, uh, government intends to replicate the media encounter in other nine regions to afford media practitioners across the country the opportunity to interact and share their thoughts on the governance uh, process. Uh, Council, let me start with you. Something that, well, this will bloat our, our uh, salary and emolument and everything, you know, a wage bill and make it bigger. Uh, instead, we should pass the right to information bill and make things easier for ourselves. What do you say to this? Well, you see, when people don't get information, they speculate. Mm. And when they don't get the right information, they misinform. And this team at the Ministry of Information, Honorable Mustafa Hamid and his deputies, mm. I mean, I think they've, 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 they've done so well. In the past, ministers at the Information Ministry gained notoriety mm. for disrespecting people and for uh, telling lies, if I should put it bluntly. But in the art time, the way they communicate uh, seem to uh, have earned the, the respect that mm. the people uh, uh, expect of uh, officials in that sector. Mm. Now, to say that they want to expand the communication uh, uh, frontiers and ensure that people speak on specific issues. Mm. Sometimes we all pretend to know it all, but we don't. So to really give people who are seized mm. with information in a particular area to communicate is the best thing ever. Because half for government, if you don't communicate, opposition will be misinforming people, like what the NDC is trying to do. There is a successful implementation of free SHS, mm. yet they want to create the impression that free SHS has failed. Mm. Nursing training allowances restored, they would want to misinform. The digital address system introduced, launched successfully. The NDC would want to say, oh, it's just some Google map somewhere. It's nothing new. So it is important to always drum home the positives of the government. Mm -hmm. In terms of the private sector, the mere perception mm -hmm. about government effort is even driving business. Mm -hmm. Opposition would not come and communicate that positives for you. It is for you as a government mm. to communicate the good things that you are doing. Mm. Government issues bonds, and those bonds, the, 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 the cheapest in terms of the costs in the history of, of, of the Fourth Republic, yet you get the opposition coming to tell you that, oh, they've raised two point something billion uh, dollars and the uh, relational interest and all that. Meanwhile, clearly in their time, mm. they got it more expensive. NDC will not come and tell you how they failed in SADA. Mm. They won't come and tell you how they pay so much money in the CDB facility. So, so how would so this am, solve the problem? I am saying that to come out with new structures or additional structures to communicate down mm. is always but, but a better way. The minister has three deputies. That, that's, that's enough. Every uh, ministry has an information person. There's the information services department. Why do we need to spread it? The question is, must we do that or must we just pass the right information bill, which will give For everybody of, the opportunity? Ease of, ease of reference. Mm. If I the, I'm at the Ministry of Communication, I've been taxed to do a particular thing. Clearly, I will coordinate with the minister in charge of information, mm. and I'll be able to give specific details, like the trade ministry issue. Mm. I've heard people talking about the communication, right. how it was communicated. Mm -hmm. And at, in a way, even people are complaining that, oh, the way people responded mm. made the NDC a bit furious. That, okay, if there's an attack on our colleague, then would also go down, mm. you know, the rough lane and all that. Mm. If some of these things were already there, communicating it in a very simple language would have been much more easier. Anybody who would attempt to raise controversy will be exposed. Mm. Or anybody who would attempt any mischief will be exposed. Mm. So it is a step in the right direction. 
day in day our government reviews everything that it does and if at the point is realized that look there is a little issue here let us decentralize communication let us get people in specialized areas to deal with the matter mm. uh, the minister of information is not a lawyer obviously when it comes to specific issues in the area of law he may communicate it all right but if at a point you realize that, look i need somebody in the area of law and governance to deal with this specifically mm. therefore there's a need to have it there there's nothing wrong with it at the end of the day if government is doing something positive mm. and it is unable to communicate same to the people mm. the people will not appreciate it. at what cost that's the point oh come on everything positive mm. everything virtuous comes at a cost all right mm. if you would want to say cost 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 perhaps you wouldn't be able to get the thing done if it would cost government money to engage the services of an individual to assist in governance what is wrong Kwame, my uh, frontiers my goodness my goodness this is the largest number of government we've ever had in our 25 years of new uh, the, 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 the celebration we are, we are having mm. 110 ministers add the district chief executives and the numerous number of people add the minister of information and his three deputies add the minister of communication and his uh, uh, her deputies and we are saying that and even if you like add 80 percent of the media in this country both print and electronic who are all under the ampit of this government and you are saying that you don't have the ability to communicate what you want to communicate. Eighty percent of media, yes, under the control of government. Yes, they are lying to you. Oh, Kwame. look, listen, my brother. Just yesterday, Kwame. a lady walked to me and said that. Kwame. Hold on, hold on. A lady walked to me and said, "How have you spent your one million dollar per, per constituency?" She's educated. To her, the deliberate lie by government that they gave every um, member of parliament in the uh, 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 one million dollar per constituency is out there and you are saying that it is ndc's fault that you and the npp deliberately lie to people when 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 the vice president goes to launch a biometric driving license last year and as we speak this morning if anybody walks to dvla they issue him or her the old driving license you say it's the fault of the the, the, the opposition that we are because you don't have enough people to talk about it my brother just last week government took 50 cities for from hundreds of thousands of Ghanaian, young Ghanaian youth looking for job because the finance minister has cut every ministry so finance minister doesn't care how much they charge them because you get a cut from that into the, into but, the but we're talking about frontiers hold on hold on, frontiers. Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll get there mm. and then you think that Kwame, you have us compare you, during you, the NDC you, time, you, you, you how much you was done, immigration? No. You, how much was immigration taken for buying forms? That, that, we are, we are, no, no, no. I, I want to ask. I, no, no, I, hold on. No, hold on. be fair to the debate. I am saying be that, fair to the debate. Hold on. Be fair to the debate. I am last saying. Year, I am saying. If you saying that it is fifty Ghana, no, Kwame. Fine, Kwame. Kwame. It is. It is wrong. Be fair to the debate. Let's deal with facts. I think it's actually last year. Last year, how much did applicant pay? Last year, how I did during the, your, your, your question is clear. During the 2016 election, right. the NPP promised they would remove that matter. Mm. So they would so, stop it. You stop charging. Move on. Yeah, I, 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 I think it was Samir who called. Oh, yes, so. yes. Kwame, yeah. look into he said my eyes. Oh, they Kwame. said stop it. Kwame, you know you are a, res you are a very respected oh, no. member of oh, parliament. My brother. You oh. argue on facts. I mean, my brother. sometimes you want to do this no. as if we are on a rally grounds and all that. My brother. Did MPP say that police forms? Military forms, my immigration brother, forms if you give will me become case. free. No, if, if did we say that? So me, I, I, come I, I, on, Alex, allow him to. No, no, no. But Kwame is a brother. I'm respect. Saying, Deal with the issues. I am not. Alex, I'm not saying this. Your time. The 50 you, cities. Yes. I'm not talking. I'm saying how much did if we, NDC if we government? Let's look at if it. NDC government mm. was in power, I would have asked for a 40 cities debate as well because mm. the situation myself and my brother saw last week of our younger brothers and sisters, we believe that we shouldn't use the sale of forms to enter the forces as another IGF. Okay. 
It is too much money. That is, I'm, I'm not blaming NPP for it. I'm saying that they are in government now. They can do something about it. Let's go back to the point. My brother, to say that 110 ministers, a minister of yeah, information, a, good lawyer, a minister you know. of information, How you swear now? And, 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 and three deputies, of who are not small boys. You are talking about Opon Kruma. Mm. You are talking about Honorable Hamid himself. Yes. There are no small boys in communication. Yeah. And then the, 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 the third one, talking about Honorable Esla Ousu and the, the two deputies who are also members of, of parliament, saying that they cannot coordinate government in, and say the they, things they, that they have not said they, they cannot coordinate. They said they want to expand the communication. But there's, there's a lay down thing where the ministries meet the press. Right. So and, they have the whole day. And, and they want to replicate that in the other night. But they have DC chief executives as well. They can do the same. So you what? think this is a not not? Yes, because my DC chief executive in Adaklu can actually call all of us together and tell us what government is doing. The only reason they can't do it because they don't have anything to tell the people. They lie. Today, like I told you, a lady asked me, how have you expended the one million dollar per constituency? Tell the lady that you, had, you needed the legislative framework mm -hmm. and that has been passed by parliament and that will be done. Tell the lady. No. That you no. couldn't spend. No, no, no. Hold on. Let hold the on. lady know. They knew. They knew. You knew. Hold on. Do you know? They ah. knew they were now coming to parliament. Yeah, they placed it in the budget that I was going to get that money. But were we so able was, to deal with it, was, it on time? It was a deliberate lie that they perpetrated onto the people of Ghana. If you say that free SHS is booming, you said mm. you, you've successfully implemented it. I don't have was a problem with that. Was it a failure? Oh, well, was it? Oh, was well, well, implemented? Okay, no, gentlemen, we gotta go. No, I thank you. Daniel, no, was Daniel, it a failure? No, it was. It was, it was say it, a, say it loudly. Okay, that it was successful. Yes, gentlemen, we need to go. It was implemented successfully. Mm. However, we had our well, younger brothers and sisters sleeping on corridors, and I'm saying that my brother, so for, for, for goodness' sake, mm. this attempt by government to recruit members or NPP communicators test along there or put them on the wait bill it's not what President Akufuado told us. Would he told you, us, would you he, many hold on, he yeah. told us the 110 ministers would deliver it's value okay, for money. Okay. Would, would you, when they came to parliament mm. that a whole ministry was charging 132,000 cities for a borehole and they tell us that they were not aware they, they, they can't uh, do those things. It means that the 110 ministers capability mm. of delivering on the president's mm. agenda is suspect. When when are we passing the right information though? It is it is the it is the job of the but, of the of but, the but you, you are in parliament. No, it's the job of the of the of the executive. Okay. It's, it's, if they wanted to pass it tomorrow, in fact they can recall tomorrow. If they want to recall to us tomorrow to go and pass the right of information bill, and I'm saying this directly, I'm urging my brother and the government, mm. if you want us to pass pass the right of information bill tomorrow, mm. I will go to parliament tomorrow and we will pass it. But so we'll put up something so but that we are you. telling him here, he's a part of the executive, him. I'm telling him. He's your lawyer. Yes, he's my lawyer. A very good friend, not only a lawyer. Okay, so, so. <laughs> I thank you very much, gentlemen. The Honorable Alexander Afinio Marking is the MP for Futu Central Region. Honorable, thank you very much for coming, Council. It's always Great a pleasure. <laughs> and the Honorable Kwame Agboja is the MP for Adaklu. He's joined me here. I, I trust you enjoyed yourself. We'll be back with some more here on New Day Sports. Is up next. I was going to say publicly that when we finish, you say okay. Well, 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 I did promise you that later on in the show we'll be talking to a very determined man who has walked right from Denmark and he's currently in Accra with us and he's going to share with us why he went on this journey and what he in what inspired him and what he aspires to attain with this walk. And I'm joined in studio by Charlie Christensen. Good morning. Good morning. So how or what started your walk? to, I mean, all the countries you've been to so far, right from Denmark yeah. up till now? Well, the, the journey uh, kind of started where it ends mm. in Tanzania. Okay. I was uh, living in, in a village in Tanzania back in 2013, where I was staying in a Maasai community in the province. Right. I was there to start an orphanage. Mm. While I was there, I experienced with my own eyes how the people were suffering from lack of clean water. Mm. Actually, they had to walk 19 kilometers to near source of clean water. Mm. So many people, they take dirty water instead and they get sick from that. Mm. So I decided that I wanted to try to help these people and I went home and I found out uh, how much it will cost to make a system and it turned out to be more money than I just had in the pocket, so I, I had to come up with a way of, of, uh, of raising the money. And then this concept of walking for water came to my mind. Mm. Basically, the idea is that I walk from Denmark to Tanzania through 30 countries, mm. more than 18,000 kilometers mm. in total. 
and uh, this creates media attention. Mm. And then I use this media attention to reach out to companies and tell them uh, that if you as a company would like to sponsor this water system, then I will advertise for you right. all that I can. Right. And I have a lot of uh, social media followers and I also get in conventional media, so it's a good way to get your name out as a company. Right. That's the concept. So for you, as you're walking, when you receive these fans, you plan to make a system for Tanzania to get water, yeah. accessible yeah. water. And then what next? Well, initially, uh, Tanzania was the only goal to okay. make a system in Tanzania. Right. But um, I have began also to try to make minor water projects in the countries I'm crossing. Okay. I started doing that in Sierra Leone. Mm and have done it uh, since. So we have managed to find sponsors for a water system in Sierra Leone and one in Liberia. And uh, I have made a project in Cote d'Ivoire that we still don't have a sponsor for and I will also go up country here in Ghana to mm. find a community in, in lack of clean water and make a project there. Right, Charlie, so when did this walk start? How many kilometers have you traveled and how many countries have you been in since you started the walk? Um, I started on my 27th birthday, the 18th of May 2015. Mm. So that's two years and seven months now that I've been living on the road. In all this time, I have never paid to sleep. I'm basically a bushman, <laughs> as you will call it here. I, most of the time I sleep in the bush when mm. the sun goes down. Sometimes I stay with local families as well. Um, I have walked roughly 11,500 kilometers until now, and Ghana is my 17th country out of 30. Nice. But, you know, is this something you've done before? Because obviously you say you live in the bush. If you hadn't practiced it or if you hadn't lived that kind of life, <laughs> it certainly must be challenging. Well, I, I, I had some uh, experiences. Uh, I was a soldier originally in, in, oh. in the Danish army. Okay. Um, and then I had some preparation trips, you know. I, I went to, to Texas to walk with a Swedish mm. guy to get into the rhythm of, of how someone lives like this after <laughs> several months. Because one thing is just to take a weekend training tour in Denmark. Mm. But uh, you learn more by following someone who has done it for some time, you know. So, so that was a good preparation. Mm. And I also went to Scotland to, to get some mountain training. On Right. And so with you, as you take this journey, has there been any challenging point where you thought, maybe it's not worth it, let me just quit? No, I never, I never, you know, when I, I'm very determined mm. on this. This is something that I made my life mission and it's a promise I gave to the people of Tanzania that mm. I will do whatever is in my power to bring them the water. So for me, this is a victory or death, you can say. Mm. Uh, I'm never at a point where I, I feel like going home, but of course some days are easier than others. Uh, especially the, the past uh, mm. uh, half year has been quite challenging. The rainy season in, in Sierra Leone and Liberia, uh, I had malaria six times. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the mud, I, you can see in the video, I had this push push. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's quite hard to get uh, through the mud and to find suitable places to camp in the bush because the vegetation uh, is growing so intense in the rainy season so it can be hard to get in and, mm. and find a place where you cannot be seen mm. from the road. So let's talk about funding. When it comes to funding your project, is mm. it self-supported or you've got sponsors out there helping you as of now? Well, my own uh, expenses are self-supported. Wow. I don't accept money for myself. Okay. Uh, and I don't accept people to give me money in the hand for the project either wow. because I don't want any misunderstandings. Okay. So the only way you can support the project as a private person is to go to the website wow. and then you can donate directly to, to the organization's bank account. Mm. We made an organization called Walking for Water okay. and I cannot uh, withdraw money from this account mm. without signatures from the whole uh, leaderboard. So mm. Those money donated 100% and uncut for the water systems. Right. There are no salaries or, or stuff like that. I pay my own visa, I pay my own food. And hmm. yeah. You must be a rich man. But anyway, Whoa. let's get that. <coughs> <coughs> uh, ask my bank about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm owning them a lot of money by now. Right. <laughs> and so you have bills to pay at the end of everything. I don't, I don't have anything at home to mm. pay for. I right. mean, I, I quit my apartment, I, okay. I, I quit everything. But, and I, I make some uh, small money writing articles. Okay. Um, and I'm starting a, a clothes brand as well that will hopefully at some point start mm. giving some money. But uh, it's, I'm living uh, on a very tight budget. 
Very well. So let's get personal. How does your family feel about this? Well, uh, I think they have been very supportive, mm. I must say. Um, my mother, uh, she is, of course, very worried, especially in this period where I have been very sick. Right. And also, uh, I think they are very worried for when I go deeper into to the heart of Africa, mm. uh, uh, Democratic Republic Congo in particular, and also Nigeria. I know that they, they would wish I will try to avoid those mm. places, but... They have been supportive. They know this is my dream. They know this makes me happy, mm. and they can see that. Uh, they can see the results. I mean, they ca they also have people approaching them, uh, saying, mm. "Ah, you must be so proud and right. stuff." And uh, I mean, it's, it's. I think that is kind of nice for them. Mm. But of course, they are worried. Every parent would be. I think. Yeah. So in the two years, seven months, you haven't really celebrated your birthday or Christmas, have you? Yeah. I'm. I mean. <laughs> Actually, this day, my birthday, where I started, mm. I made kind of a mark day. Okay. So it was on this one year day of when I started and my birthday that I also crossed the Gibraltar straight to Africa. Mm. And I decided on this day also to become a vegetarian. Um, okay. Uh, so it's, it's a special day for me. Mm. There's a lot of things to celebrate on this day for me. Well, now that you've mentioned it, do you think being vegetarian has helped in your expenses during this course? Well, uh, it's definitely not making life easier in mm. Africa because many people don't uh, understand the concept right. <laughs> and it can be hard to, uh, to find uh, food in, in small cookhouses where there mm. is no meat in, but I, I mainly cook my own food. I have a little gas stove. Um, I think being vegetarian have helped me in a spiritual way. Okay. I, I, I spend a lot of time in the nature, obviously. I, I sleep in the nature most nights and I feel somehow more connected mm. to the nature. Mm to the animals. Right. I, I used to say, partly in fun, uh, that uh, I have an agreement with the animals, I don't eat them and they don't eat me. <laughs> Very well, but in the few years you've been in the bush, have you had any encounters, scary ones or that? Not with animals. Definitely. I had uh, two incidents where people were sneaking in on me in the night. I'm sleeping in a hammock. Mm. Luckily, both times I woke up. Okay. Uh, and then I, I approached them right. and both times they got scared when they saw me. I don't think they had actually realized there was a human. They just seen my box, right. shiny box and oh, what is this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I say, hey, what are you doing? And ah, oh, the first guy, he had a machete okay. and he started fencing like, ah. And then he just ro uh, yelled, in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ. And then he ran away. Right. So he probably thought I was a devil or something. <laughs> And the next guy, next guy uh, actually shouted, demon, demon, and then he also ran away. Oh. But of course, it's something that whew, uh, gives you a really? shock and, yeah. and it makes you think, uh, wow, uh, I should yeah. probably be more careful. Hmm. But that's, that's the only really uh, close call I had. Right. But you fly? No, I walk. All the time? All the time. I have, for example, crossing the Gibraltar Strait hmm. from Europe to, to Africa, I have to sail because okay. I cannot walk on the water. Mm. And there is also uh, a few other uh, lakes that I had to cross, cross by, by, by a, boat by a or canoe or right. whatever, you know. Right. Uh, but where there is land, I walk. Mm. No transportation. I can take transportation when I'm stationary somewhere. Okay. Like, for example, uh, if I'm in a capital, I'm usually staying for a couple of months mm. to do administrative work. Right. Uh, and then I will take transportation mm. around. But I continue walking from exactly the same place as I stopped. Mm. But how has immigration been with you? Mm, mostly good. Okay. <laughs> I haven't had major problems. Mm. I think it helps also to have a philanthropic project. Right. Uh, okay. Because most people sympathize with that and they, they don't feel like making trouble for me. And, and, and I don't think it's a secret that here in Africa, most of the trouble you run into, you run into with authorities is because right. they want to fill their own pockets. Right. And I have my papers in order, I have my visa, I have my, my stuff. Okay. So they cannot really do anything but waste my time. Mm. And uh, I have plenty of time. So. Mm. But so what word do you have out there for people who seemingly will want to join a similar course and also do something good? Well, uh, actually, I'm glad you asked that mm. because Walking for Water is supposed to be a platform mm. where other people can do the same thing. Okay. For me, I had to start from scratch, making website, getting followers, getting, making a name of it, mm. uh, making the rules, the organization. But for the next guy who, who wants to do something similar, 
everybody is very welcome to join. Okay. Not my particular journey. I don't uh, wish people to walk with me for, for longer distances. Mm. Um, but I will be glad to help someone arrange their own walk mm. from some place to some place. But there is some guidelines in the organization that you have to follow. It has to be about raising money for water systems. Okay. But where you want to do it and where you want to walk from and to, it's, it's up to you. You have to do the hard work yourself and, mm. and plan most of it yourself. And then, yeah, I can help uh, spreading the, the word. Very well. So, Charlie, when does this walk end for you? Mm, when I'm in goal. Uh, originally, I thought it will take two and a half years in total mm. from a calculation that I would walk 30 kilometers a day, uh, oh. six days a week. Uh, 30 kilometers a day in average is, is, is fitting quite well. That's mm. about what I walk. But I'm spending a lot more time in capitals mm. usually than, than I had expected um, because I need to, to earn money for my own living. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also need to, to, to uh, visit communities and to get in touch with the media. And mm. sometimes I meet a nice girl and, you know, <laughs> I also have a life. You certainly do. So, uh, have you met any nice Ghanaian girl? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Very well, guys. So I have been talking to Charlie Christensen. He's from Denmark and he's walking for water. Certainly, I'm sure this is a change all of us want to see across West Africa, Africa and beyond. And so it's a good cause. You can join him on social media. As he said, you certainly will find him. And you don't have to start afresh. If you do want to join in something like this, certainly get in touch with him and definitely he would help you. Anyway, we have more for you here on New Day. See you soon. And welcome back. Happy birthday to you, Mavis Nikwe. You are in Latvia, uh, Good to know that you're doing the watching. It's your birthday. We don't know how many years young you are today, but uh, happy birthday from Etanam C and all the family. Uh, happy birthday to you. And a uh, belated one to you, James Chris, your uh, Samuel Hammond, and to you, Hannah Edge, as well. Let's check out some of your messages on WhatsApp. Lots and lots and lots of them, but we'll try and see which ones we can read. Okay. Um, I see, I see you're very interested in the conversation about how many forms uh, immigration, uh, Ghana immigration sold and how many people they employed. Very interesting matter. Hi, good morning. For the country to work well, uh, said the president, that we, I mean all Ghanaians, should be citizens and not spectators. Uh, Ghanaians will surely succeed. Ghana will surely succeed under the able leadership of Nanado Dankwe Kufado. Long live Nana's presidency. Long live Ghana. Free shipping, one district, one factory. Nana Preman. Okay. Good morning, TV3. There is nothing wrong with the committee set up to probe into the experts' issue, but the five members should be firm, irrespective of their political affiliation. Thank you very much. Alasan Wana Iwa says, Good morning to you and your viewers. The approval of and signing of these five bills, namely the Office of the Special Prosecutor, Northing Development Authority, Middle Belt Development Authority, and all the others, uh, Zungo uh, Development Fund by President Akufado, will help to fight against corruption by corrupt officials and to strengthen uh, economic growth and development to eradicate poverty in the country. I thank you very much. Good morning to you and your panelists, especially uh, Afenyo Marking. Um, he has, in fact, made my day. Ghanaians should be patient and expect more from the MPP government this year. I'm totally convinced that the president and his government will surely succeed with their good policies. What's the Ghanaian dream you want to know? No one is taught the core values of the country and where the country wants to go. So individuals think of themselves. Look at the local movies. Do they portray Ghanaian dreams? There is the need for government to incorporate the Ghanaian dream into the syllabus for young ones to be taught. Bob in Santema, I agree with you, my brother. In 2016, forms for various security agencies were sold at 100 Ghana cities as compared to 50 cities in 2017. Thanks to MPP government, but my worry is 84,000 people applied for only Ghana Immigration Service. You can imagine what would happen to the uh, Ghana Police Service, the Ghana National Fire Service, and the Ghana Prison Service. Something ought to be done quickly. Julius, 
in Nandom, Upper West Region. Good morning, TV3 New Day in Ghana. I'm touched positively by the way the two honorables address the unemployment issues in Ghana. If our political device shows such concerns when it matters most, Ghana's dreams will speedily be met. Thank you. And regards to fellow Casfordian, Honorable Afenyo Maki, Kwesi Kwating, uh, Community 25 and next uh, Tema. Kwesi, is that you? Well, good morning, TV3, New Day, and the uh, good people of Upper West Region. I have a strong conviction that the MPP will fight corruption and expose corrupt officials. The MPP is committed to work for Ghanaians, and for that matter, will not take monies from expatriates for uh, sitting closer to the president. Caesar uh, Timbele from WA. Good morning to you, Johnny, and to your panel. In fact, the setting up of the five member committee by Parliament to investigate this matter of uh, money extortion from businessmen is nothing but uh, to throw dust into the eyes of Ghanaians by the MPP. This is broad day robbery by the trade minister and his deputy. But the committee was set up by parliament, not by the MPP government. So, uh, uh, Abdul in, in, in Sahana and Tamale, I don't get it. Well, good morning. We, the youth of the Eastern Corridor and Claim, wish to inform any political party that will vote against them for the attempt to sabotage us getting a new region. Thank you. Good morning, TV3. I like to show, in fact, Ghana's democracy is actually growing thanks to our parliamentarians uh isaku iwa i feel disappointed as a graduate in ghana i completed five years ago and still uh, i'm in the house unemployed ghana immigration service decided to collect this huge sum of money from unemployed youth with the intention of employing them look politicians i predict there's uh, that no there's not going to be war drawing war you eat your words back and you go and deposited somewhere. Come on, TV3. I salute the three Johns for the achievements under the Fourth Republic, and we expect the current government to do well to fulfill its promises. Noah and Takrani, we're grateful for that. And good morning. Finally, perhaps uh, TV3 in Japan, especially Mr. Afenyo Markin. The minority in Parliament were in a hurry to this issue. That's why there's too much procedural irregularities in it, but all things has been equal. Let's wait to see what happens with the five-member committee in Parliament. My regards to Honorable MP uh, and MC of uh, Buzuwa Gushegu. I thank you very much. So, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly says... Today is a war on the streets mm. with the hawkers. Mm. Um, yes, as of Friday by 3.30 p.m., we did not know how much it was going to cost us. Mm -hmm. And that's according to the Municipal Coordinating Director, Mr. Ayedate. Uh, we hope that at this point, they do know how much it's going to cost. But uh, we'll be following up the issues. There's more New Day um, tomorrow. But ahead of that, midday and 3.60 will deal with the topical issues. If you are selling at the wrong place, Vacate. It's for your health. It's for your business. It's for your family. It's for your friends. It's for your own good. It's for Mother Ghana. Certainly. Mm. On that note, we wrap up. We're we'll see there. you same time tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We have to go so that we can also be productive at work. Yeah. Certainly go out there and do something good for Mother Ghana. We'll see you same time tomorrow mm. from 6 to 9. Myself, Johnny, and George will be back. Have a Absolutely. blessed day. Be good.